They say water is life and humans can live without love but cannot live without water. Clean water is inestimably precious and essential for the good health of a nation. But what happens when you can't access this precious natural element? My name is David Mufarage. Um, I'm CEO and founder of Maji Zima Limited, which is a small charitable organization that endeavors to get water filters into communities that wouldn't normally have access to safe drinking water. I first came to Kenya in the late 1990s um, with a small charity again but doing totally other stuff um, and one of the ladies working with us on that charity who was a single mum um, while I wasn't in the country she contracted cholera and, and died and that sort of kind of um, put in my, my head the idea of trying to do something about seeing that less people have that sort of problem. So that's how I got started in the late 1990s um, with a small charity again but doing totally other stuff. Um, and one of the ladies working with us on that charity who was a single mum, um, while I wasn't in the country she contracted cholera and, and died and that sort of kind of um, put in my, my head the idea of trying to do something about seeing that less people have that sort of problem. Margie Zima nearly 10 years ago um, and we initially had portable water filters that we were getting to lots of communities all over the place. There was, um, Kimbiu slum here in Nairobi and lots of um, areas around Lake Victoria actually. Um, Mbita, two or three schools there and one or two of the islands <coughs> on the lake. Um, and we sort of graduated to a less portable type of filter because Invariably, an awful lot of those portable filters, because they were portable, just disappeared. Um, so we've now got something that's a bit more sustainable um, and does a job for a lot more people uh, and for a lot longer, obviously. David has a heart for the needy and will never settle until he provides a water filtration system for clean water to the target group. And today, we are privileged to accompany him to this home where he's doing an installation of water filter. Originally, my profession was that I'm a dentist um, and I practiced uh, all over Australia and parts of Europe um, and sort of right about when I was ready to retire, I got involved with that other charity that brought me to Kenya um, to do education program on malaria control. And while I was here, I just fell in love with Kenya. I founded Maji Zima nearly 10 years ago. Um, and we initially had portable water filters that we were getting to lots of communities all over the place. There was um, Kimbiu slum here in Nairobi and lots of um, areas around Lake Victoria actually, um, Mbita, two or three schools there and one or two of the islands <coughs> on the lake um, and we sort of graduated to a less portable type of filter because invariably an awful lot of those portable filters because they were portable just disappeared. Um, so we've now got something that's a bit more sustainable um, and does a job for a lot more people uh, and for a lot longer. Masi Chebet takes me through the technicalities of how the water filter works. My name is Masi Chebet. I'm the general manager for Majizima. What I do is I try and find beneficiaries like Mary Faith, people who are um, need the water filters are interested and um, and then we try to you know get in touch with them get them to understand how the filter works how it's going to be good for them and then uh, I also set up the installations and stuff like that preparing for the dates and things like that 
uh, general administration, obviously. And then after we do an installation like this one, we do education. We teach them about safe drinking water and also how to maintain the filter. During our interaction with David, I couldn't help but want to know why he is all barefoot. Yes, our hero has gone all ahead and acquired himself a local nickname, Mguchuma. But how did he get there? Since 1982, okay? I don't like shoes, that's all. Sipendi viatu, kabisa. It's as simple as that. Generally, when I'm with my smart aleck brother who just would doesn't tolerate the idea of my being in public without shoes on. It can be challenging to run a charity that will require some serious funding and time to mobilize all the necessary resources. The Majizima founder shares with us. We do a small amount of fundraising here in Kenya. Um, and we have a sister charity in the UK who've been our major donors for most of the last 10 years. Um, we have, uh, or we're actually forming a, a board in, charitable board in Australia at the moment. Um, mostly the funds that we have received from Australia have been private contributions from my friends and family. Uh, and we're now sort of registering as a charity there and we'll be getting a substantial amount of our, our funding from Australia. And we'll continue to fundraise here, of course. Despite all the challenges, he keeps walking, and I seek to know where he gathers his motivation to drive his charity. It certainly felt like taking the filter away and finding another recipient who will appreciate it, rather than leaving it there to rot. Um, but that's, I mean, as I said, the, those situations are in the minority, mostly our installations have been successful and, and appreciated. David is impatient, <laughs> but he's a fun boss. Uh, he's really passionate about getting safe drinking water um, in communities. Um, he's very emotional. We go to a place like this and we see the need. We see that uh, we're not fixing everything, we're not fixing every problem, but we are reducing a little bit in the sense that they get safe drinking water and they're not spending too much on you know hospital bills and boiling water or treating the water so they get safe drinking water at the end of the day and it's something that he, he is really really passionate about and as you know from our story it's why he got into this immediate beneficiaries of this water are forever grateful to good deeds of david my name's uh, mary jerry uh, I am the founder and the director of Mary Faith Children's Centre. David came to visit here with the Nasalini University student. They had a project here that they were doing, so they came to visit and that is how David knew all about us. And then he, he asked me, do, what is, how do you take water here? Is your water clean? I told him, we always put the either water guard, because water guard is so easy, I can be able to get it in the local market. So I would buy water guard and put it in the tanks for the water to be clean. So when uh, when David heard about it, he told me he will go and talk to his friend, one of his friends, who is the owner of that uh, project, and see if they can be able to come and uh, do for last uh, that water purification. So the, they went and came with David back. When they came with David, we, I listened to David, and David told me this is what I'm going to do. I said it's okay because they, and now I will not be running for water guard. The water will be clean, and uh, the children, I will not also be boiling water for the small kids. But so it's it's very good for us to be given uh, that um, filter, and they decide they started working about it. My name is Tisha Judy. I'm at Shaheni with Faith. Or Mama Viana. David, I'm grand to him. As in, Suji, I'm a big heart. My name is Emily Okwayo. I study in Kibauni Secondary School in Machakos County. I'm, I'm in Form 4. Yes, I'm in Form 4, doing my KCSE this year. Yes, and I'm glad. 
the water that is being installed in this home will help me and also the other children in very many ways more than before where mom used to use some money buying some water guards to put in the water for us to drink but now i think the water that david has decided to install for us will help us at least mom will have to save some money for other uses rather than buying water guard where each and every day because in this economy where we are staying a lot of things have risen up and they are being bought at a high cost of money so i think he has done a good job because at least i will not have that time where before i used to to have to boil water for me to drink right now i'll just take the water in a cup and drink it directly it doesn't end here according to david the future is bright there is so much more so i'd like to thank him very much for what he's doing i know it's not so easy because he has a family where he can help them but he has decided at least he can help a huge number of children who are here because of lack of parents and all that. So he has used his, his salary to come and install for us some water. I really thank him and may God just bless him. To David I can say what they are doing to the community is a good work. Considering he is not from this country, he is a foreigner. And he, can, he just came to the country and see the need of clean water. And that is what he is doing. To us, we can say that uh, he is doing a good job. He is impacting uh, so many families with clean water. And uh, we can say he continue with his project and to get more donors, because I know he also need donors so that he can continue in impacting the life of the people. Yeah, and may God bless them so much. Huge thanks to Maji Salama, who for the last 10 years have been our major support, major and serious support, um, and not just financial support. They've given us a lot of in-kind help, um, a lot of good legal advice. So, yeah, they've been fantastic. We're looking to do some installations in Bondo, and I've just been informed maybe another installation in Merritt. So that's the immediate future.